Hello and welcome back. I am about to explain you three different ways that you can use to debug your code. Each of the three methods that I am going to use will help you to find out where exactly the error happened in your code and be able to do it very fast. Say you are not able to find out where the error happened exactly using the very first method that I am going to explain. You can always go back and use the other two methods to run your code step by step and find out where the error happened very very fast. So there is some code I have typed beforehand. I have defined two functions, a new func and my func. In the new func, I am just taking a string as an input and trying to print a non-existing variable. This is where the error happens. And in the second function, I am just doing some math and returning the value 2 into c plus new func d. New, this new func is nothing but the one I have defined here. Okay, let me run this code and I'll call my func passing to arbitrary variables. As expected, it has shown us an error. This is just a, a trial case where I know where the error is happening because I made the error. But you can use the same principles I'm going to show you now to address any type of errors that you will be facing in your future codes. Okay, now the error has happened. Assuming that I don't know where it happened, to find that out, I'm going to use traceback, just a traceback and open and close the brackets. And it is going to give you the steps are executed while when, when you call that function. So the first step is it called my func to comma three, and that went into another new function that is new func d, and then it the error happened at the latest step right after you type traceback over here. This is step three. This is where the error has happened. That's what traceback shows. So traceback is good enough for our case, but imagine that you have a code where there are multiple levels of functions within functions within functions. In that case, probably traceback will not go give you the exact stage where the error happened. So to find that out, you can use debug my func. Now I have told R, the next time when I run my func function, it has to debug my func. So I'm going to call my func to come up four. When I do that, it's not going to execute it fully. It's going to execute it step by step. So the first step is debug at one. It shows these lines. That's the next step. C is equal to, it's executing C is equal to two into A. The next line, the next line, and that's where the debug or the error happened. So it stops. Now, when I try to call debug or this function, my function, 2 comma 4 again, it's going to go through the same sequence of steps. To stop this from happening, I have to do undebug. Sorry, undebug my func. And that clears the debug. So now when I call my func again, it returns the error value. It runs as normal. Hope that's clear. Now let's go to the third way. The third way is I'm going to insert a new command in my code. Just one line. Let me insert it right at the start of the function itself. I'm going to write browser. This is the command. Now let's clear the screen and I'm going to call. Sorry, I have to run this whole function again, define the whole function again. So now I'm going to call my func. Right after the very first step, it encounters this command browser and when it encounters browser command, it is going to go into the browse stage. At this point, 
what you can do is you can see what's there in your working environment it has two variables a and b that you have defined to call the function only those two are there now let me press the return key and go to the next step what's in there still a and b only now a b and c are defined a b c d are into the working working environment so you can go step by step as the function goes through each and every line and with after each step you can see what is there inside the function say if i want to find out what value c holds c is not having anything because it already ran this error creating command and it's showing the error so c is not holding any value and run this entire thing again so now let's check what's in a 2 b is 5 c the value c is giving from the last previous iteration of the run so ignore this actually c is holding an error and when the browser encounters this error it is exiting out of the browser environment so probably i have to call the function again let's run step by step now at this stage when it is going to run this specific return statement where the error actual error happens so before that i can see what's there in my namespace a b c and d and what values does c hold it's an error the same mistake all right um d is executed so d holds 25 so d is 5 into 5 that's 25 when i if i type c is going to return an error and come out of the environment and so let's just or return and that's that's where the error happened i kind of tend to use the debug statement and the trace back a lot so within those two steps you can find up pretty much find out where the error happened this browser statement that we showed that we just saw here is kind of cumbersome but i think when you start using it again and again you should get a hang of it so that's it for this video if you find this useful please like this video and leave your comments let's meet up in the next one thank you